Hello everyone. Today I wanted to talk about saturation and different ways of adjusting saturation in DaVinci Resolve 18. And the goal of this lesson is to encourage you to use more selective ways of adjusting saturation, as this can give you more control over the final result. This is our before and after. And also, if you are interested in the color grading course for beginners that I'm creating, don't forget to subscribe to my mailing list below this video. Let's start! And this is our clip for today. I got it from Artgrid, it's been shot with red camera in red lock film, but I'm in color managed environment and it's been already converted to Rec 709. And here I've only adjusted the exposure quickly. This is before and after, because I want to focus only on the saturation. So we'll skip the exposure step. So let's highlight the saturation note. And now, the most popular way of adjusting the saturation is using the saturation slider. So let's go to the primary wheels and let's move the slider all the way up so you can see how it works. And basically the saturation slider increases the saturation evenly across the whole image. And this is before and after. And it depends what kind of result you are looking for. But for me, now the image is a bit oversaturated, so I will go down here to around 85 maybe. Okay, looks more natural. And let me grab a still as well, so we can compare the result of different techniques in a while. So when I right click and then I click on grab still, it appears in my gallery up here. Okay, now I will reset this node and we'll move to the color boost slider. As a lot of you are wondering what's the difference between color boost and desaturation. And here when I go all the way up to 100, the result is way too strong. So I'll go back down to 35 maybe. Okay, and basically the difference between the saturation and the color boost is that the saturation boosts the saturation across the whole image and the color boost saturates the least saturated parts of the clip more than the more saturated parts of the clip. So now when we compare both stills, we can see that we have more saturation added in the highlights and in the shadows when using the color boost. So let's reset the node grid again. And now I will show you how to adjust the saturation with the HDR global control. And the HDR controls are designed to work with HDR footage but they are not exclusive to HDR footage, so you can use them for regular SDR footage as well. And the saturation slider is over here. And the reason why this way of adjusting the saturation is best is that the HDR controls are color space aware. So if you want to make sure you get the best out of it, set your input color space and gamma correctly. So again, you can see how important it is to know how your footage was shot. So, for example, you may have a shot filmed as Rec. 709 and Gamma 2.4. So let's set it here. But again, if you don't know how your clip was shot, you can still use the HDR control, but the algorithm behind this adjustment would work better if you knew it. So let's move the saturation slider all the way up. And now let's compare our three techniques. So we can tell that the HDR saturation gives similar results as the standard saturation control. But I would say that HDR is a bit more precise and looks a bit more organic. It gives a better color density, which we can see, for example, comparing the yellow jumper of these two shots. It's only a slight difference, but still. And now, no matter what technique you will choose, you can always make additional adjustments in the saturation by using our curves. And I will show you how to do it. So here the first thing I don't like is that there's quite a lot of blue highlights in the girl's hair. So I want to make a selection of it and I want to take it down a bit without affecting the rest of the grade. So let's go to our curves then and then hue versus saturation as this is where we adjust the saturation of the hue. Then I'll qualify these highlights just clicking on the right place on the clip and then we can maybe spread these points a bit more to broaden the selection. And look what happens when I push this middle point down. We basically got rid of that blue tint from the highlights. And this is before and after. 
and now I can select the yellow as well and I can take out a bit of that yellow to make it look more elegant, more subtle. Then I'll grab green and I'll add a tiny bit more saturation to it, like this. So you can actually see how powerful it is to combine different techniques together. But now I'll just see the final result full screen. Thank you so much for watching my videos, guys. I hope that you like them. If you do, hit subscribe and don't forget to leave a comment below. See you soon.